Hey, how's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. We've got a fun one in store today. We're going to go through all sorts of things related to web scraping and Python and specifically be looking at the beautiful soup library. A couple of logistical things before we begin. If you haven't already and you've enjoyed any of my videos, it'd mean a lot to me if you subscribe. And then the second thing is I want to just thank everyone who responded to my post uh, when I asked what should be included in this video. Uh, I wish I thought of this uh, before I actually made this post, but thank you for the person that responded everything. Uh, we'll just do everything in this video. Uh, no, I mean, I thought about it a bit more with all your feedback, and I think what we're going to do is probably make a couple videos on the topic of web scraping, but this first one will really be about the basics, HTML and CSS, you know, what is web scraping. Then we're going to dive into the beautiful soup library and kind of learn the building blocks that we need from that library. And then the final part of this video will be a section of exercises where you can kind of test out your skills. I think that should be a pretty fun section. A timeline in the description or attached to the video, there's all sorts of places you can find the timeline these days. Uh, but let's just jump into it. Okay, before we get into web scraping, it's important to know how web pages on the internet actually work. So any site that we go to, whether that be YouTube, Amazon, Wikipedia, they're all composed of some combination of HTML and CSS. So HTML is a language really to style web pages. So here we have, uh, you know, my YouTube page. And the first thing to understand is that we can actually see the HTML source code. And this is possible on pretty much any browser you are using by right clicking and clicking view page source. So this YouTube page we're looking at right now, it's styled by all of this code that you see here. And don't worry if this looks a little bit intimidating to start. We'll, we'll start with a lot simpler examples of HTML. Uh, but another important thing to know is that, you know, that was a lot to look at. But if we're looking for a specific HTML that represents specific elements on the page, so let's say my subscriber count here, we can use not view page source, but inspect. And so this is kind of a separate view of the HTML. If I expand this a little bit, you can see a bit. But as I kind of navigate over these items, we see we got uh, my name and the subscriber count. I could just, if I wanted to, grab the subscriber count and I can actually, within the web browser, I can edit this. So let's say I wanted to have, um, you know, 100 million subscribers. I'm coming for uh, PewDiePie. Um, now, as we can see, I've edited the, edited the code and we can see it says 100 million subscribers here. So that's another way you can look for specific HTML on a page. And note that I didn't actually change the, the code on YouTube servers if we refresh the page. Unfortunately, it will go back to this number. But these are two good things to know about uh, as we get into our web scraping. So the core of what web scraping is, is using Python or another language to programmatically look through HTML source code and pull out only the things that we want to scrape the web pages for elements that we want and information that we want to collect. So an example here would be maybe I wanted to scrape my YouTube homepage and just grab all of the titles of all of my YouTube videos. That is one example task is why we use web scraping where we, I didn't want to manually go through and write down all these video names. I wanted Python to do that for me. All right, let's start moving towards getting into the code. Okay, I want everyone to navigate to the page keithgalley.github.io slash web scraping slash example.html. So here, once you load that up, it's a very, very simple um, example of an HTML web page. We really just have like six or so elements on this page. So once again, we can right click, click view page source, Actually, what will probably be easier is instead we'll do the inspect. And this is small enough where we probably can see pretty much all of the code. So we have a header. So this head is what we see in the top left, the HTML example. That's the title. And then we have the body. And that's ultimately all of this stuff. So I'm going to just kind of unfold all of this so we can see all of it in its entirety. Um, but here we go. So we start with the body. That's what we, is actually on our web page. We have a h1 tag, that means header. 
we have a paragraph, which is going to be a link to more interesting example. And then the next thing is the A tag is a link, which is pointing me to another web page. Then down here, we have a smaller header that's denoted by H2, some more paragraph, which this time is using italics, which is an I tag. We have another header here, same size as the other header and some more text. And one thing to note here is as you can see, this has an additional property, and this is something we're gonna look for as we start to scrape. It has an ID equals paragraph ID, uh, but this is a basic page. So we're gonna load this into Python. Uh, open up your preferred editor and let's start writing some code. Uh, I'm gonna be using a Jupyter Notebook through Google Collab. Uh, so the first thing we'll wanna do is uh, load in the necessary libraries. And so with Google Collab, I already have these provided for me, but you might need to pip install these. So the first one we're gonna in, uh, import is the requests library. Uh, and this is going to be so we can load those web pages that we were just looking at. So if you need to, you might have to do pip install requests, but I already have it so I can just do import requests. And then the second thing we'll wanna import is actually the beautiful soup library. So this is a little bit more complex of a line, but I like to import it like this. So from beautiful soup four, import beautiful soup as BS. And so if you don't have this one, you're probably gonna have to do a pip install of beautiful soup four, uh, or maybe a pip three install of beautiful, beautiful soup four. But we can run that. And then let's load our first page. So we're gonna load that page we were just looking at. And so we can do this by the following. So we're going to first load the web page content, and we'll do this with the request library. So we can do uh, r equals requests dot get. And now we're gonna pass in the URL. So the URL was https slash keithgalley dot github dot io slash web scraping slash example dot html. So that's the web page we're looking for. And so once we have that, now we wanna convert it to a beautiful soup object. Convert to a beautiful soup object. And so how you're gonna do this is the following. You're gonna do soup equals BS, and then surround it with r.content. Uh, that's gonna be actually the HTML on the web page that we get back from this request. And finally, uh, we'll wanna print it out. So print out our HTML, and we can just do print uh, soup. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool, so this is our page. And one thing to note, in addition to just printing out all of this, we can actually add an additional little snippet where we do soup.prettify, and this will just format it in a little bit more of a readable way. So you can see exactly the indentations and what level uh, certain elements are compared to other elements and what elements are nested inside other elements. Okay, so that's our page. And as we can see, everything that we were looking at before is all here. All right, let's now start scraping with the beautiful soup library. Um, and so I think what will be useful to start here is to look at some of the documentation for the beautiful soup library. And as I go through some of the elements in this, I think it'll be easier and easier to look through this documentation yourself. Uh, there's a lot of useful stuff here and it's actually not that crazy large of a library, but you know, you have some uh, initial stuff, kind of initial navigation here at the start of this page. Uh, it has the installation here, and I'll link this in the description, this documentation. Um, and you know, kind of how we import it. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna look at is going to be find and find all. So we see it just kind of here with uh, navigating using tag names. So let's look at find and find all. I think this is what I use most frequently when I'm using Beautiful Soup. So it's useful as kind of a starting point. All right, so we have soup, if you remember, that's all of this HTML here. So what we're gonna wanna do is, let's say we wanted to grab uh, just these H2 elements. So very easily with Beautiful Soup, we can go ahead and do, I'm gonna say first header equals soup dot find h2. So we pass into this find command the tag that we're looking for. In this case, it is the h2 tag. And so if I run this, 
and then actually print out the first header, uh, you see we have a header. And note that when we just use this find command, it's gonna find the first element that matches the description that we passed in. Uh, the other command that's useful to use, and I honestly use this way more frequently than I use just find, is to use find all. So uh, headers will say is equal to soup.findall h2. So the, the syntax here is exactly the same, but now we're not gonna stop on the first element. We're gonna create a list of all the h2s. And so even if there's just one element, it's still going to be a list uh, of that one element. So now let's print out the headers. And because I'm using a Jupyter Notebook, I can either do print headers or just type headers as the last line and it will show this. But now you see we have a list of both these headers. So that's a, a very simple example of grabbing something from our page, but we get a lot more complicated as we go. So the next thing is that we can actually pass in a list uh, of elements to look for. So let's say in addition to the H2 tags, we actually wanted both also the H1 tag, so any kind of header element. So what I can do here is I can do, same as last time, first header equals soup.find, uh, and then pass in a list here instead of just a single object. And I'm gonna do H1 and H2. Now let's print out first header. Uh, and see we have HTML web page, which matches what the first header is because these H2s come after. Okay, and note that the order here doesn't matter. Whatever you put in this list, it's gonna find the first occurrence of one of those items. So if I did the order the other way around and ran it, we'd still get that same result. Um, okay, moving on, yeah, again, as we can see with find all, we do find all and pass in that list, we will get both the H1 tags and the H2 tags. So headers, we see we have now three tags because we're including H1 and H2s. So that's another useful thing to know. And we're gonna just keep building up our intuition for find and find all. This is, I would say, the most important uh, function within the beautiful soup library and we can get more and more complicated with how we use it and I'll show that. So the next thing that we should look at is that we can actually pass in attributes to the find slash find all function. So an example would be a paragraph. If I did equals soup dot find all, let's say P and then print it out paragraph. We see we have all of these different elements. There's three uh, listed. But let's say I just wanted the paragraph with the ID, paragraph ID. Well, we can pass in a second argument to this, and you see right here, attributes. So this would be what you'd find in the documentation if you looked up find all. So if I pass in attributes, I can use a dictionary mapping uh, of the property that I'm looking for. In this case, it's the ID, and we want that to be equal to paragraph ID. And I run that, and now we just have a list containing the single paragraph item. And note that if this wasn't a valid ID, we'd get nothing here. So that's another useful thing to know. And we're gonna keep just building up these building blocks. So what's another useful thing we can do? Well, I think something that's really useful as you're trying to get specific elements on a page is to note that you can nest uh, find and find all calls. So what I mean by this is that we could say something like body equals soup dot find of the body. So if we look at our HTML up here, let's say we only wanted, you know, we have the head here, but we only wanted the stuff in the body. So we can start with body equals soup dot find body, print out the body. Um, as you see, we have that here. And now let's say we wanted just this div. Div is basically a container within HTML. So now I'm gonna say div equals body dot find div. So now just within this body, we are specifically looking for a div. 
And so this is very helpful as you have a really, really big page like you saw with that YouTube page on narrowing down where you're scraping from. So if I go ahead and print out the div, now we have just this stuff within the body. And finally, let's say we wanted to just get the header from that. Well, I can say header equals div dot find of each one and print out the header. Uh, and there we go. I guess one additional thing that I think is useful with this before we move on to the next function would be that uh, we can search for specific strings in our uh, find slash find all calls. So let's say we wanted to find all, I'm gonna real quick uh, just print out our, our soup. Oh no, what happened? Um, okay, so let's say we wanted to just find any paragraph with the text sum. So really some italicized text and some bold text. Well, we can do that by doing soup.findall paragraph tag. And then one of these arguments is text. Uh, actually, this documentation that Google Collab is using is a little bit outdated. It's actually now known as string in uh, beautiful soup four. So string equals, let's say sum, and we're gonna find all. So we'll say paragraphs equal this, print out paragraphs, and it is blank. Uh, so we have an issue here. Uh, why is it blank? Well, if we think about how this paragraph text actually is, it doesn't include just sum. It's either some bold text or some italicized text. So if I did some bold text and did the full string, now we see it. That's not ideal in my opinion. You usually don't wanna look for an exact string. You might wanna find a, a specific word or two. So this becomes really useful if we leverage it with the regex library. So if I import re, which is regex, and then I do re.compile, and then I do sum, now it will just look for, if I, if I do it right, what did I do wrong? Oh, I had an extra thing by accident. Now it will just look for some somewhere in the string. And this becomes particularly useful too. Another example we could do with a regex is find all headers that have the word header in it. And note that these headers have different capitalization. So if I wanted to find those headers, I could do headers equals soup.findall. Those are both H2 elements. And I could be looking for a string equals re.compile. Um, and then pass in header. If we run this, we just get one because that just gets the lowercase one. But because this is a regex, we could do something like h or h. So that's now looking for a capital H or a lowercase h using regex syntax. And there we go, we get both. So that's useful too. I think that's all we need to know about find and find all. Okay, the next functionality we're gonna get into, it's pretty similar to um, find and find all, but it's going to be the select method within beautiful Sup, uh, soup. And this is really kind of like uh, selecting elements based on kind of how you would select elements in CSS. So I haven't talked too much about CSS yet, but uh, kind of as a quick introduction, if we go to uh, this page that I've linked to, this is the more advanced example we'll do a lot of the exercises on. Um, you know, this is a little about me page. Uh, if we view the page source here, uh, this top stuff that we see up here is the CSS and it's basically how we can style specific elements uh, in the HTML. So ju that's just a little bit about CSS. We'll see that a little bit more in a bit, um, but let's go back. We're gonna use that, the way that you style specific elements with CSS, Beautiful Soup kind of also mimics the ability to select elements like that. So I think the best place to go to start seeing what you can do is this CSS selectors reference page, and I'll link this in the description. 
but basically it shows us kind of different ways we can select elements in our HTML. So like if we do dot class, that selects dot intro, selects all the elements with class intro. If we do uh, hash pound signed uh, ID, pound sign ID, first name, that selects all elements with ID equals first name. We can also just pass in an element, so like select all P's. You can nest things, so like all paragraphs within a specific div, that's how you can select it. You can do div plus P, selects all P elements that are placed immediately after div elements. Uh, so there's a lot of useful stuff here. You can also you know, grab specific attributes. So like if there's a certain URL you were looking for, you could use it uh, to do that. And you'll see once, this page will be very useful as you kind of see me using select in action. But let's go ahead and start by just selecting all of the paragraph tags in our page. So soup.select p. And then I can print out content. And as you can see, this is very similar to doing find all of, of P. One thing that's really useful with this type of method is, yeah, is using those paths. So if we look back at our HTML, and maybe it'll be useful for me to just kind of like print out some HTML again. So I'm gonna add another code cell. Uh, I'll just print out soup.body. And this is kind of a nice little shorthand to get just the body. Um, but we have the body here, and maybe I'll prettify that and print it. Um, cool, so that's the body. Let's say we wanted to just grab paragraphs that were inside of divs. So I could do soup.select div and then paragraph. Uh, and so we see now we have that only th this one right here. Other stuff we can do with this, we could, let's say we wanted to grab all the paragraphs that were preceded by a header two. So I could do paragraphs equals soup dot select. We will want H2 and then I believe this squiggly and then P. So that's gonna be getting the, the paragraphs directly after H2. And when it says directly after, that means on the same level. So you see that the nested is right there. And let's see if that gets it as we hope. Some italicized text, and then we get some bold text. So that did it exactly how we were hoping. That's awesome. Uh, let's do some more of this. Um, what else is useful? Well, it's also useful to grab specific elements with IDs. So let's say we wanted to grab the bold text, the bold element after a paragraph with ID, paragraph ID. So I could do it this way. I could say uh, bold text equals soup.select. Well, I wanna grab the paragraph with hashtag ID, paragraph ID, and then I want inside of that a B element, the, the bold text element. Now, if we print that, we get bold text. So. You know, you have a lot of options with this. This kind of, I, I would say, if you're trying to navigate through a specific path, using select is very helpful. Um, and you're going to get, as you get more and more practice with Beautiful Soup, you kind of get a feeling of when you want to use select, when you want to use find and find all. And always you can go to that reference page that I showed uh, to see how you can use this. And one thing that's a little bit of a bummer is uh, some of the things down here. I uh, don't actually have support in Beautiful Soup, but a lot of this top stuff I think is all supported. I guess real quick, one final thing that's worth mentioning is you can kind of run nested calls. So if I said, um, you know, paragraphs equals uh, soup dot or dot select, uh, you know, any the body tag followed by uh, some paragraph element, and then. I wanted to, or maybe I wanted it directly, the direct child to be a paragraph element. So that would uh, take out this as an option because it's this paragraph's inside the div. It's not a direct descendant. So direct descendants of the body um, paragraphs, and that would give me 
these two things. And one thing we can also do is I could say like for paragraph in paragraphs, I could do, I could do nested kind of select calls on these. So I could do paragraph dot select, um, let's say I want an I tag. And I think that should print things. Uh, I guess I'll do print paragraphs. And then I'll print paragraphs dot select. Okay, so as we can see, we get the paragraphs and then we iterate through these two items in the list. And first time we do have an I element, so we can select that and print something out. The second time there's no italics in this element, so it's just an empty list. And I'm gonna quickly paste in one more thing to show. Uh, I could grab an I item with an align equal middle by doing the following. But let's move on to getting different properties of the HTML. So let's say like as a first example, one thing that we might want to get is a the string within an element. So I don't want just the header, I want the the text a header, not the, the full tagged element. So if I did soup.find all, or maybe I'll just do find h2. Um, and that's equal to header. Note, if I print out header, it's going to give me this, but if I did header.string, it will give me just that text. So string is a nice thing to know. However, if we do it with the div, so if I do div equals soup.find uh, h, or I guess it's div, if we print out the div, Notice we have all of this, and if I, I think it'll be a little bit more clear if I do print div.prettify, but we have this div. If I try to call print uh, div.string on this, see what happens. So it says none, and the issue here with the div, why it can't print out all of the text in this tag is because it's not clear if it should print out HTML web page or if it should print out everything in the paragraph here. So because this has two kind of elements at the same level as children, it doesn't know what to look at within that div. So if you ever run into this type of problem where string is none, there's another built-in method of beautiful soup called get text, which is very useful. And we can use that for uh, bigger objects and getting all the text inside kind of in a recursive manner. So now you see we have HTML web page link to more exam uh, interesting example, uh, and it gives that link. So if multiple like child elements use get text, otherwise we can go ahead and do use uh, dot string. So that's getting the string. What else can we do here? I think it is useful to actually get like this link and know how to get that href here. So. Let's now go ahead and get a specific uh, property from an element. So to do this, we could do soup.find. We could find the links. And note, you see that this link tag, if we print that out, link, uh, we get this link tag. Uh, we just want this href because that's the actual link that we would use. So if I do link.href, it doesn't work. But what we can do is I can go ahead and with that link tag, I can pass in in brackets href like this. And as you can see, we just get that link here. And you can use this in other ways where if I grab paragraph equals soup.find, or did I say do soup.select paragraph with the ID paragraph ID. Uh, and we printed that out. If we just wanted to get this ID from the element, we could do paragraph zero, because this is in a list, and then we could do ID. So you can kind of pass in anything in the bracket syntax that's one of those properties. So that's useful too. All right, the final thing we'll do before we get into the examples is some code navigation.
Okay, I'm going to try to go through this section pretty quickly. First thing I think it's good to know about is path syntax. So basically we have, you know, our soup object, as we've seen before. Uh, what you can do is there's shorthands. I could do like soup.body to just get the body. And I could just keep doing this. I could do dot div to get just the div inside of the body. Uh, then maybe like dot h1 to get just that header. And then I really wanted to dot string to just get the uh, string of that header. So path syntax is good to know. Um, another thing that's good to know about, and it really comes down to three terms that you really need to know. So I'm gonna say know the terms, and the terms are parent, sibling, and child. Parent, sibling, and child. Okay, and this will be more clear if I do a pretty print of the body. Okay, so what does parent, sibling, and child mean? Well, when we look at our body here, we have this nested structure. And so these terms all kind of I, uh, relate to that nested structure. So the di this div, its parent is the body because it is nested within the body. Likewise, this body, child is the div. So the body is the parent of the div and the div is the child of the, the body. Um, if we look now at this div, we look at the elements that are on the same level of it. And the next element that would be on the same level is this H2. So if elements are on the same level, we consider them siblings. And just to see what we can do with those terms in Beautiful Soup, there's several things that Beautiful Soup offers. Um, so if you look at the left side of the documentation here, you see all sorts of things. Navigating the tree, and it talks about contents and children, descendants, uh, it talks about parents. Uh, the really useful things that I think are kind of right around here with these function calls. So find, find parents, find next siblings, find previous siblings, find all next, and find all previous. These commands can be pretty useful if you wanna just get a subset of elements. So just to do one quick example, let's say I did find next siblings. So find next sibling would get, is kind of like find, and find ne next siblings with an S is kind of like find all. So let's just say we grab soup.body.find each one, or no, let's just find the div. So we have this div, and as we saw before, this the siblings of that div are the h2, I guess the paragraph, this other h2, this paragraph, etc. So there's I think four total elements that have that are siblings to the div. So I did find next siblings. We should get a list of four elements. So we get the header, the paragraph, first paragraph tag, second paragraph tag, or, or second header, and the second paragraph. So we could accordingly, you know, do some additional processing on those uh, siblings. And with all those other terms I just mentioned, that documentation also has ways to um, access those. So you know, you could uh, find all parents, you could find all next, uh, etc. So useful things to know about and you can kind of look into the documentation if you need a specific uh, thing among there. I honestly don't find myself using these types of functions nearly as much as just using find, find all, and select, but good to know about. All right, let's get into exercises. Okay, for the exercises, we're gonna be using this page, keithgalley.github.io slash webscraping slash webpage.html. And I'll link this in the description, but just a reminder what that looks like. Uh, it looks like this. It's kind of an about me page, kind of a little fun thing I put together. But we're gonna be getting specific elements from this page. And to help you do that, I recommend right clicking and clicking inspect. And note that if you like open up the body, you can kind of see exactly how every one of these elements is styled in the HTML. And that's gonna help us scrape specific things out. All right, so how this is gonna go is I'm going to present a task on that web page, 
And the way that I think you're gonna get the most out of this section is that every time I present a task, if you pause the video, try to solve the task on your own, and then resume it when you're ready to see the answer or see how I solve it. There's gonna be multiple answers to all these tasks. It will really allow you to you know, practice your skills and, and drill down the library. All right, so let's start with the first task. And I guess before we actually I present a first task, let's just load, uh, load the web page. As a reminder how to do that, we can just run it, load it the same way basically that we loaded that other example page. Make sure if you haven't already, make sure you've imported in requests and imported the beautiful soup library. Let's load the web page. And the one thing I want to do here, this is now webpage.html. And the one thing I'm going to just give this a different name. I'm going to give it the name web page and we can print out webpage.printify now. So this is loading the page. And as you can see, it's a lot more text than it was before. So first task is going to be to grab all, all of the social links from the web page. And to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna say that you have to do this in at least three different ways. Because ultimately, we can select items in many different ways using, and, and not only does it have to be done in three different ways, but one has to use find slash find all, and at least one has to use the, the select method. So let's go back to our web page. So what we're trying to grab is all of these links right here. Feel free to pause the video, try this on your own, and then resume it when you're ready to see how I would go about solving this. All right, so what I would do would to start out would probably be um, kind of pretty simple right from the get-go is I would just try to see what happens when I select all of the A elements because A elements are the links on the page. So what happens when I do that? And as we can see, um, we get some stuff there, but it's, you know, our socials are here, but we get all this other stuff in addition to our socials. So this is not the best uh, way to go about this. So what else can we do? Well, let's go back to the web page. And remember, we can do inspect. So if we go ahead and start inspecting these elements, we see that once we get to the socials, um, they are all in this class, this unordered list class, UL, uh, with a class name of socials. So if we grab this, then it's pretty easy to get the links from there. All right, so how can we do that? Well, we wanted to get that unordered list uh, and we wanted it to have the class name of socials. So remember, if we did pound, that would be the ID, but dot is for class names. So ul.socials, and what does that, just that give us? Okay, cool, that gives us what we're kind of looking for, but now we just want these a elements within that. So we can do ul.socials a and run that line. And cool, we have a list of the a tags. And now if we wanted to just get the actual links, so I'm going to say actual links, that's going to be done. If we just do a list comprehension, we could say link href, because that's where the actual link is stored in the href. Um, for link in links. And then let's go ahead and print out the actual links. And look at that, we got it. Cool, so that's one way. Let's move on to the second. This time let's try to use find. So once again, uh, a nice starting point might be to do find. Let's see what happens if we find just the first A tag. Uh, print that out. Okay, we get this tag. All right, but that's my YouTube channel. That's not what we're looking for. But we can do the same kind of thing that we did before. We Ultimately, if we just find this element, so if I said UL, uh, oh, nope, that gives us the fun facts. But if we passed in also the attributes dictionary with class 
equaling socials and then printed out links, we see that we get the tag that we're kind of looking for here. So we can go ahead and copy this code in and ultimately navigate over all of those links again on that. And we get an error. Um, string indices must be integers. Uh, okay, let's print out links again. Okay, I see the issue here. We did find, so this now is not in a list, it's just a single tag element. So what we could do is basically do links.find all of the a tag within that, get a list just like we had before. So I'm gonna say that this is called ulist, unordered list, and ultimately links is going to be equal to ulist.find all uh, of the a tag. So this is our ulist. Now we're finding all of the links within that. Print out links. Cool, we get this. And then finally, now I think we can copy this in and ultimately get our new number two way of grabbing these links. Cool, we got it. So now we just have to do one more. Uh, let's go back to the web page to try to figure out a nice way to do this. I'm just looking at the inspect tool again. And what I see here is that these have a class tag. The individual list elements have a class tag of social. So if I did something like, uh, let's say links equals web page dot select of list dot social um, within the a tag within that, we should, I think, get the same links as before. And look at that, we do. So we just really grabbed the individual list elements instead of the entire uh, unordered list of links. And as a result, our third and final way, um, we copy that and we get everything. All right, the next exercise is going to be to scrape the table that is included on that web page. So we go back to the page and you scroll down. I actually included a table of my MIT hockey stats. Very fun stuff. Figured this was a simple, uh, fairly straightforward table that'd be fun to scrape. Uh, I initially took this table from a site called Elite Prospects, but I simplified it a little bit. So if we wanna scrape this, I think the first thing we should do, and actually feel free to pause the video, I won't dive into it yet, uh, and then resume when you're ready for the solution. All right, so I think the first thing that we want to do is to inspect this table and just see what we're working with. And to get the entire table, we see that we can grab this table with class hockey stats. So let's do that in code. So web page, or let's say table equals web page dot select. Um, and we're grabbing the table with class hockey stats. And let's see what we have for table. And as it looks like we have everything there, that's what I'm seeing. Uh, and just because maybe we don't want this in a list, we can just do select and just grab the first element, which is the only element. And then we get that just as the tag form, not uh, the entire table. All right, and next it's really a matter of, I think the best way to scrape a table is to load it into a data frame in pandas. So let's import pandas, so import pandas as pd. And now how do we scrape this table to actually go into that pandas data frame? So for something like this, you might be able to do it off the top of your head, but this is something that I would usually, you know, do a Google um, to stack overflow for. So let's do that. So how to scrape a table uh, using beautiful soup, we could look up something like that. Uh, take the first stack overflow post and kind of look through it, see if it's what you're looking for. Uh, so this person's trying to scrape a table and this person responded with kind of how you can do that. And the one thing that I kind of see with this response is that 
it's scraping the table, but it's it's not, it's, you know, it's printing it out as a string. It's not putting it into a like pandas data frame. So what I think we should actually look up is scrape a table into pandas data frame. And I'll also look up beautiful soup as another keyword in this search. Uh, scrape tables into data frame with beautiful soup. That looks good. It's got a decent number of upvotes and let's see what the answer is here. Uh, try this. Uh, that looks pretty straightforward. So I'm going to copy this code and just utilize it within our um, code. So if I go ahead and insert a new code cell, I'm just going to paste this kind of as reference up here and try to mimic the behavior with uh, our table. So first thing is that our columns will be ultimately this table header stuff. So I think the first thing we should do is try to grab all of these table heads. So we could do that with, um, I'll say column, columns equal table dot find all th. And maybe just to be careful, let's, because we can kind of see the scope of this, let's do first table dot find, uh, table head and then do dot find all table heads here. Uh, and let's see what we have for columns. Cool, we get a list of what we're expecting. And now if we wanted just the column names, that would be, we could do a list comprehension, which would be uh, C dot string, we'll say for a C in columns. Let's print out column names, look at that. So we get all the column names. Uh, this one looks a little bit weird, so we might honestly ultimately get rid of that. And also because we have these duplicates over here, that might cause problems in pandas, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. We have the column names. Next, really, we need to copy this um, code here. So table rows, how do we get the table rows? Well, we're going to go into the table body. So rows are going to be equal to table dot find. We want table body. And then we want to find all table rows. And just to look at the table again, just to see how it's laid out, I think is helpful. We have table heads here. And that's all within the table head. In the table body, you see we have these table rows. And inside of that, you have all these table datas. So we're going to need to find all of the table rows. And then we're going to basically do a bunch of processing within the table datas of those table rows. So we're going to do find all table rows. And then now we can basically copy this code. So let's paste that in here for TR in table rows, so I'll just call this table rows just to mirror the syntax. Find all table data. TR.txt for TR and TD. I'm gonna do dot string just because that's the most up-to-date syntax. Maybe actually text is totally fine too, but you can use either dot text or dot string. A row equals TR.string. L equal append row. So I'll also include that L that I didn't include up here. So that's the empty list that we're basically adding all the row details to. So after we run that, let's see what happens if we print out L. And look at that. It looks pretty good. Like let's just do L the first row. It looks pretty good except for the fact that a bunch of them are just like new line characters. So how do we strip out new line characters? That'd be kind of another Google search. Strip out uh, white space or white space and new line characters Python. So it looks like I can do dot strip. Okay. Cool, it looks like it'll strip any white space with the dot strip method. Uh, so I'm gonna try doing tier dot string and then dot strip as well. And then see what now our table row looks like. 
Hmm. What happened there? I'm gonna surround that in string dot strip. What happens? Oh, look at that. We did it. Uh, I, I guess you couldn't call the strip on just the string, but once we converted it into an actual Python string object, it was a lot more friendly. And that looks like a pretty clean row. So now what we'll do is we'll just merge this into the data frame. So df equals uh, pd.dataframe l. And the columns now are not that. They're going to be the column names. And now let's print out our data frame, df.head. Come on. Oh, that looks good. I love it. Oh, no, it looks like some things are missing. What is missing here? I guess because some of this had nested elements, the dot string didn't work. We might have to do dot get text. Let's see if that fixes things. Oh, look at that. That looks pretty good. Yeah, some of those tags had nested elements, so the string did a none. But that looks pretty good. Um, and we could go ahead and do pandas type stuff on this. So I could do like df uh, team. And we see we get each of those. I could do a tf dot loc of df where team is not equal dot string team is I guess not equal to uh, did not play what happens if I do that and look at that we filtered by that and then maybe we would want to do like uh, dot sum or something like that and just get the the totals Oh, that doesn't look right. But uh, we scraped the table. I'm not going to go into the details. You might have to like convert some of these columns to different things. Uh, it also might be worth not including these last ones or just changing them to have slightly different, um, slightly different names. Because if I did GP, I don't know what would happen here. Yeah, I guess it gives me both of those columns. But if you wanted. It kind of makes things weird because we have duplicates. So you might want to rename them so you can get each column having only a single, uh, each column name only having corresponding to a single um, column in the uh, data frame. But that's more of a pandas question than a beautiful soup question. And uh, just so you guys can uh, give me a hard time in the comments, uh, if we look at the table again, uh, you see how all of this post season stuff is empty. Yeah, unfortunately in my four years of playing, I guess I played five years. I don't know why 2013, 2014 is missing. Uh, but in my five years of playing, I never made the post season. So yeah, a bunch of blank <laughs> spots in that, t that side of the table. But yeah, that's scraping a table. All right, next exercise. We're gonna grab all of the fun facts that use the word is in it. So going back to page, we got up near the top, we have these fun facts. Uh, let's read through them. You know, I I owned my dream car in high school, everyone. I'm kind of a baller. Uh, if you click on this footer, though, you get some details about that. And this might, might, this might not be everyone's idea of a dream car uh, because uh, it was actually a minivan, but it was an awesome minivan. Uh, middle name is Ronald, very fun. I uh, never had been on a plane till college. Uh, the first time I was ever on a plane was for my freshman at, year at MIT's lacrosse trip. And I uh, was given a fun haircut before that trip. Uh, <clears throat> next fun fact, Dunkin' Donuts better than Starbucks. Very, very important. You need, I need everyone to know that. You gotta support Dunkin's. Um, some other things. So we're grabbing all of the fun facts here that have the word is in it. Let's do that. So we have web page. I think what we're gonna have to do is find fun facts. Uh, we see it's a class. This is gonna be very similar to the social media links. So let's grab the, the unordered list with class fun facts. I'm gonna say facts equals web page dot select. 
uh, ul dot fun facts. Uh, and then I'm going to grab all of the list elements from that. And that should give me something pretty good. Look at that. We got all the list elements here. Now we just need to figure out of those list elements. So I'm going to do find all that contain the string equaling and uh, now we're going to have to import regex again. Uh, it should be already imported from before, but in case it isn't, uh, you can import regex again and do re.compile uh, is, and let's see what happens when I do facts with is equals that. Uh, list object has no attribute find all. So we're going to make this list comprehension. So we'll do fact dot find all for, I guess, fact dot find. We don't need to find all because there's only a single string in these for fact in facts. Does that work? And now let's see what happens if we print out facts with is. None, none. Uh, cool. This looks pretty good. I think it looks like only the first and third didn't have uh, is in it. And let's just confirm that that is right. So first doesn't have is, third doesn't have is. All the other ones have is, as we can see here. So the last step of this would be, you know, maybe just getting rid of um, the nuns. So you could just do like another list comprehension if you wanted to do. I'll just say facts with is equals fact for fact and facts with is if not fact uh, or if fact because none is a false condition. So if they are none, this wouldn't be true. So let's see what now happens. Look at that. I think we got it. So note that we're really close, except for the fact that these had some like italicized elements in it. And right now, the way we're doing this, it's stripping out the rest of this text. So what we're gonna need to do is in the string element here that we're grabbing, we can do fact.findParent and just get the element that's directly above it. So ultimately, if we run this, we see now we get everything in it. And we could even then go ahead and do dot get text on the find parent. And that should just give us what we're looking for, for the fun facts. Look at that. So that was actually fairly tricky uh, with this nuance here at the end. Uh, so this was kind of a fun little exercise. All right, next exercise is how can we go to this web page? and download one of these images. So we have, you know, the image of me, and then we have some Ital uh, images of uh, Italy that I took uh, last year when I made a trip there. Uh, so this is Lake Como, this is uh, Florence, and this is a sunset over Rio Maggiore. I can't say it. Uh, I'm gonna botch anything that I say here, but it's in the Cinque de Terre, uh, Cinque, uh, Cinque de Terre. Uh, Man, Italians watching this video are gonna be, are be pissed. Um, <laughs> but I had a great time uh, at all these places. But let's try to download one of these images uh, using web scraping and uh, some other libraries. So that's the task. Uh, try to do that, pause the video, and uh, then resume it when you're ready. All right, because I am using Google Collab right now, uh, instead of uh, running this code here in my Google Collab notebook, I'm gonna actually use a local Sublime Text um, file to do this downloading. Uh, so uh, the start code here is just really getting that same web page as before. Uh, just now I wanted to do it again because this is uh, Sublime Text. But as you can see, if I ran this code, all of the stuff that was there before is still available. But now let's go ahead and, and grab an image and ultimately get the source for an image so that we can uh, download the image. 
So if I inspect these pictures, we see we have images slash Italy slash Lake Como. So this is a local path. So really we need to get our current path, which is um, the web page that we're looking at, and then add this on to download the image. So that's good to know. And this is inside of a div called row and a column called class. So I could probably do something like, oh, we're gonna do web page dot select div dot row div dot column. And then we want images within that. So let's see what happens if we print that out. And look, we get just the images that we're looking for. Now we need to basically append on this to our URL. So I'm gonna pull out our URL and say your URL is equal to just this directory. This is kind of our base path. Um, so now if we change things up a bit, this would be equal to a URL plus webpage.html. And now what I wanna do is for any of these images, so I think for simplicity's sake, we'll just grab the image of Lake Como. So we have, I'm gonna say, our images are equal to webpage.select. We're gonna just grab uh, the first image and we will want to download that. So we need to get the URL. Well, we'll say image URL equals image zero, then we'll get the source for that. And let's just print out the image URL. Image is not defined, image is zero. Uh, so we have this, that's what we just printed out. Um, Okay, so we need to append this onto our, so our full URL is now going to be equal to full URL equals uh, URL plus image URL. And now we just need to download that. Well, I think this is something that uh, will be helpful to Google. So I'm gonna just say Python download image, uh, using URL. And then we get a Stack Overflow post right here. Save image from URL. Let's see what we got. A sample code that works for me on Windows. This looks pretty straightforward. I wanna see what other replies there are. And this one's even shorter and I like shorter. So we're gonna try doing this one in our code. It uses requests. Um, we already have imported requests. Uh, so that's basically just making another request. And now we're going to need to use the full URL because I pasted this image, this code in. We didn't have it as we wanted. So full URL, we're gonna get the content. So this is just like getting the web page content, but now we're getting the image content on that page uh, with open. And then we can name this whatever we want. So I know that this is gonna be Lake Como and we'll open that as a writing buffer. And let's just confirm, yeah, this is a JPEG image, so we can use this extension, handler.write uh, image data, that should be good. And now that's ultimately gonna save it wherever we have this code locally. So I'm gonna run this. I think it ran, I'm gonna confirm. So over here, I opened up the folder that I had this download image file in. And as we can see, I can open up the image of Lake Como locally. That's pretty cool. So we just downloaded that. So we get the full quality here. And wow, looking at this again, this was just such a beautiful spot. I definitely recommend traveling not only to Italy, but checking out Lake Como. It was, the, it was so relaxing and so pretty. I mean, I'm missing this right now, <laughs> being in the middle of the pandemic. But okay, that was downloading an image, so we're done with that exercise. All right, final exercise before we conclude this video. It's gonna be solving the mystery challenge. So if we go one more time to this web page and we look at the bottom, there's a bunch of links here. And if you scrape 
just the paragraph tags with the ID secret word from all of these links. And you got to do this in order. Each, uh, each one of these files is going to have exactly one of these uh, secret, word, secret word IDs. And just to show what the file looks like, it looks like this. But if you scrape those all and just grab the, the correct ID, uh, you'll ultimately get a, a fun secret message. All right, so how are we gonna do that? Well, let's look at what these links look like, inspect. Um, all right, again, they're similar to the image just from the last exercise where it's a relative path. So we can probably utilize some of that previous code we did uh, to get to open those files and we'll have to use requests again to uh, dive into them. And then if we look at the actual file and we look at it, uh, we see that all of these have ID secret word with two C's, not the secret word we're looking for. One of them has the specific ID we're looking for. So we're going to scrape for that. All right. Let's do this. So I think first off, let's grab our um, elements that we need and see what they are. Let's just see what's in this this so we have a paragraph we have a div so these class block divs that looks like what we need to find uh, and we need to get out the links from there so what I'm going to do is a select here I'm going to do web page or let's say files equals web page dot select it had it was a div with class block. So we can block, select those and hopefully nothing else on the page has those. And then we wanna grab the um, link from that, those uh, block divs. Let's see what now files gives us. Look at that. It looks like it's all the files we want, one through 10 in order. So now let's, we wanna just get the relative paths I guess relative files will say equals a file and we're going to get the href element. I think file might be a special word in um, Python. So I'm going to just say F F H R E F for file for F in files, print out relative files. And remember, you can pause the video if you want at any point, if you don't want to watch me solve this. Uh, but look, that just gets us the relative paths. And then we need to kind of, from our previous example, we should go ahead and, you know, kind of copy some of this code. So I'm going to say URL equals this. So our URL equals this. Um, then we're going to say for file and for F in relative files, we want to construct the full URL. So full URL equals URL plus, uh, the relative path. So the F here, so that would be like this path, this URL plus this, that's going to be our full URL. And then we're going to want to load that page. So we're going to do requests dot get the full URL and then ultimately um, page equals that. And then we'll want to load that into beautiful soup. So B, uh, uh, BS page equals uh, be beautiful soup, pass in the page. And then within the beautiful soup page, I guess that's just uh, look at one of these pages. So we'll just do beautiful save page dot body, print that out. Maybe prettify it. Um, and then break out of this. So this is only gonna run once. Ah, type response has no length. Where is that an issue? Oh, okay, we're gonna have to do page dot content here. Okay, and now we get the page. Cool. 
So now in that page, it's just a bunch of paragraph tags. So if we just go ahead and do uh, print vs page dot find uh, paragraph, or I guess we can do, let's do find. We'll do find the paragraph tag. We want to pass in attributes equals ID secret word. And that should get us for that file, the secret word. So let's run this again. Because it looks like the page was loaded in properly. Look at that make. Okay. So that's the secret word for the first file. Um, with uh, la, 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 in the tag. So if we wanted just the string, uh, so I'll just do secret word element equals BS page to find that. Um, and then if we wanted just the secret word, that's going to be secret word element dot string. And then let's just print secret word and just make sure it works for one file. Make, cool. So now we're gonna remove this break and uh, we'll see what it prints out. So now it's gonna iterate over all the relative file paths, add it to the URL to get our full URL. And ultimately, hopefully this will give us our secret message and we can be done with the video. Let's run it. What is it gonna say? Oh wow, look at that, look at this secret message. Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. That's all we're gonna do in this video, everyone. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this, hopefully you liked learning kind of a little bit about uh, what web scraping is. Then you learned about the building blocks and then we did a bunch of exercises to really drill down those skills. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, yeah, it would mean a lot if you smash those like buttons and subscribe. Uh, also, feel free to check me out on the other socials. Uh, Instagram and Twitter. I do appreciate when people follow me there and I feel like it's a good way for me to kind of show my personality a bit on those other platforms. So I post some cool stuff in those places. Uh, do I have anything else? Yeah, I guess the only other thing I want to mention is that I'm going to try to do some follow up more kind of complex examples of web scraping in the future. Uh, maybe like a real world uh, web scraping uh, video. And I also want to dive into not just Beautiful Soup, but I would like to look at uh, Selenium and Scrapey. So I might do that in future videos too. But feel free to let me know in the comments if there's anything else that you'd like to see. All right, once again, that's all we're doing in this video. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, this has been a fun one for me. Peace out.